Theology is, theology is, theology is, theology is, theology is, doxology is, doxology is. Hi, this is Jonathan with the Hope Moment. This is Theology Famine Relief, session 38. So we've been talking about theology, and as we say in the title, the Theology Famine Relief, we see this great need for people to understand biblical truths. Uh, unfortunately, growing up in a church, um, I learned a lot of things. Some things were correct, and many things were not correct, and many things I did not know. I was never taught and um, and was ignorant through these things. And so we really want to take this 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 dire need of of this famine um, and and begin to uh, and to quench the thirst uh, of people and be able to answer questions that um, in a biblical way um, and to be able to really just glorify God as we get to know who God is. And that is what exactly theology is, is the study of God. Um, so we've been talking in the last several weeks, we talked about what our purpose is as human beings on this earth. We learned that it is to glorify God in all that we do. Um, we learned about how do we know there is a God? And we talked about that, that it's in, in, we see it in nature and we, it's written on our heart. We see that this is, it, it's ingrained in us. This is something God has given it to every man, man and woman to know that there is a God. Um, and of course, man in his depravity suppresses that. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, they cannot deny. There is no excuse. There is a God and they know it. Um, and so today we want to learn about, okay, we know what our purpose is, glorify God. We know there is a God, but how can we truly know that? And so one, the, the main thing to understand is the, this precious gift that God has given us, and it's called the Word of God. And so the question today is, what is the Word of God? And essentially the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible being given by divine inspiration are the Word of God the only infallible rule of faith and practice. We see today that people are rejecting the Old Testament. They don't see Christ in the Old Testament. They don't see his relevance in the New in, in today's um, in modern times. Um, they cherry pick verses to um, fit their, their ideas and their theologies and their belief systems. And then essentially they just created an idol. Um, and we see people um, that uh, that don't look at the Word of God as inerrant and sufficient. Um, they're not satisfied with the Word of God. They have to have outside revelations and prophecies and words. Um, and any person that says, thus saith the Lord, the Lord has told me this, um, they have to be careful and have discernment because essentially they're saying, God has inspired me with this Word, and that Word is... Um, essentially should be added to the Bible. And we know that the, the Bible is a closed canon. It's, it's complete. And we know that it is, um, it is sufficient to, for, for all things. Everything that, we, that God um, wants us to know is revealed in his word. Um, it's important to understand that the Old Testament is pointing towards Christ. We see this redemptive plan uh, being unfolded in the Old Testament. Augustine said that the new is concealed in the old and the old is revealed in the new. And that is so important to understand as we are interpreting the Bible in its proper context. And, um, and so we'll get into that another time. It's also we see religions that, false religions, that, um, that say that the Bible is not enough. We see Mormons that they say, well, the Bible is not enough, so we need to have the Book of Mormon. Jehovah Witnesses will create their own version of, of the Bible. And so um, at one time, my father had uh, a Jehovah Witness Bible that he used as, a, as, a, as more of a, just as an informational thing for him in case he had a, a, you know, an encounter with a Jehovah Witness. And if you read one section of, of the same book of the, of the New Testament, it would say they removed um, that Jesus was the Son of God and that he was just a prophet or a good man or that kind of thing. And then you will see in another verse that they forgot to remove, and it contradicted what they just said, and it says, Jesus is God. So we see that, we see this happening. We see in the Quran that um, a man says that God inspired him, um, and, and so he created this outside book. Um, and so 
this is the the attack that is that happening once again is on the sufficiency and inerrancy of the Bible. We're seeing it happening once again, and we need to fight against that. Um, as the, the Hebrews talks about in Hebrews one, in the past God spoke through the prophets, but now He speaks through His Son. And what does John say? And He's the Word. Um, and so this is something that's so important for us to understand. So let's look at some verses that that confirm what we're talking about, that the word of God is the Old and New Testaments. So if we look at uh, 2 Peter one uh, twenty one, For no prophecy has ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Talking about that the word of God did not come from a man. It might be their vocabulary. It might be their grammar. They might be invoking their, their culture into it, but is the word of God. Second Timothy, which I love, is Second Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is, is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And then at, in verse 17, it says that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So it's saying that the Bible is sufficient that the man of God can be complete. It doesn't need, man doesn't need anything outside anymore. He's got the word of God. Um, Isaiah 8, uh, 20, to the teaching and the testimony, if they will not speak according to his, this word, it is because they have no dawn. Matthew five seventeen through 18, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets uh, regarding the Old Testament, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So we're seeing Christ announcing right there that he did not come to abolish the Old Testament, but to fulfill it. And so the Old Testament, once again, the New Testament concealed in the Old, Old Testament pointing towards Christ, and the New Testament revealing the Old Testament. It's a beautiful thing to understand. Uh, and then if you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 2.13, and we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. This is so important. Yes, the Word of God is inspired by, the, by God himself. It's not taught by man's own wisdom and abilities. It's taught through the Spirit. It's interpreted through the Spirit. And those who receive it, uh, they have to receive it. And, and, and with through the through the guidance of this Holy Spirit, this is why when the Word of God is spoken to those that are not believers, um, they're 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 blinded to the truth. Um, you have to be in the Spirit to truly grasp the depths and the beauty of the Word of God. Psalm nineteen eight seven eight through seven, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The uh, precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And that says it beautifully. It, the word of God is perfect. The law of God is perfect. And it revives the soul. It, it, it's a testimony uh, of the Lord. And we know that this is a sure thing. This is our surety. We, it makes the simple wise. And, it, and it, uh, it causes our heart to rejoice as we learn about these truths, about who we are as human beings, that we are people that were dead in our sins, as Ephesians 2 talks about, that we were not good. We were not seeking God. Maybe we were seeking the benefits of God, as Romans 3 talks about. But through his grace, God himself came down and became a servant, lived the life we weren't able to live, and bore the wrath of God that we, that we deserved as our substitute so that we can be justified, made righteous before God, and adopted into his family, and one day have the hope of being glorified and being in, in that perfect state in, in union with Christ for eternity. It's a beautiful truth. This is what the Word of God is. The question today was, what is the Word of God? The scriptures of the Old and New Testaments are the divine inspira inspired Word of God. It's infallible, and and it's, it, it's inerrant, and is sufficient, and we need to we need to keep fighting this fight for the for the sufficiency of Scripture. 
So let this be the battle cry for every pastor, every elder, and every believer to stand firm on the word of God and to understand that in the past, as Romans 1 talks about, God through, spoke through prophets, but now he speaks through his son. The word of God is sufficient. And so please, we plead with you to begin to study the word of God. Begin to meditate on these things. Don't go and read the Bible and cherry pick the, the verses. Don't read things out of context. Interpret the Bible correctly and, and, and look at the word of God and say, what is God trying to say in this word and in this, in this, in this text and, and not try to put your presuppositions into this and not your opinions and not what you wanted to, to say, um, but read it, love it, accept it and apply it to your life. So we hope this is an encouragement to you. For those that are believers, we pray that this will strengthen you, edify you and bring you closer to Christ and that you will be empowered to be able to go out and preach the gospel. And for those that are not believers, we pray that God will regenerate your heart and will transform your heart in producing faith and that you'll begin to see your sin through the eyes of God and will repent of your sins and turning them away, turn it away from them and put your faith completely in Christ alone so that you may have the joy of knowing that you are saved and will have the, uh, the eternity uh, is is sure for you that you know that your eternity, although you deserve condemnation, that you're now a child. Although you were once an enemy, you are now adopted into the family of God, and that seal with the Holy Spirit to preserve you and to sanctify you, making you more like Christ each day. And one day, we all will be united in Christ in our glorified state, and to be able to be with Christ for eternity, singing holy, holy, holy. So we thank you for taking this time to watch this video. We hope it was an encouragement. If you have any prayer requests or any questions, feel free to contact us. We're here to serve. We love you all. Grace and peace.